everybody. Welcome to Hippie Art by Tiffany. Hope you're all doing good today. Welcome to the Santa Cruz Mountain. So today I am going to paint over this painting that never grew on me. I just, I liked it in the beginning, um, but it, it just, when I put it up on the wall, it just was too busy. And so I'm going to try to paint over it. Um, I've taped my back. This is a I think it's a 12 by 12. I'm gonna have to measure it. Let me see here. Okay, I can't find my um, tape measure, but I believe it's a 12 by 12. Um, if it's a 14 by 14, I'll put that in the description. Um, so I'm gonna do an old fashioned flip cup. I say old fashioned because um, it's been around quite a while. Um, I learned how to do this from artists like uh, Julie Cutts in Queensland, Australia, and uh, Jilly Cube in Australia, and a bunch of other artists uh, that were already doing this well before I started, um, and that's why I learned it from. I'll put links to their um, videos in the description um, as well, and you should check them out. Um, okay, so what I'm uh, using today, my pouring medium, is exactly what has worked for me in the past. Um, we got, let's see if you can see this, if I'm doing this right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Elmer's glue all, not, um, school glue, Elmer's glue all, and water is my pouring, pouring medium. Um, I kind of, I kind of try to stick to 60% glue, 40% water rule, but basically what I do is I put about, um, probably one of these, this is one of these little four ounce cups. I put about two ounces of, of paint in my cup and I put about um, a half a cup of glue and then a quarter cup of water and I mix it all together. And if it's um, too thick, I water it down. If it's too um, thin, I put a little bit more paint and a little bit more glue in it and I try and get each and every color to match thickness. Um, today, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I like to have a, a trace on the top. Um, it, it depends on what I'm going for. I want small cells today, so my paint's a little bit thicker. Um, if I was going for big cells, I would have a thinner paint. Um, so what I'm doing today is so, somewhere sort of in the middle. I kind of want small cells, but we'll see what happens. Uh, my colors today are... Amsterdam Phthalo Blue, that's this one. We have um, Studio Acrylics, um, what is this one? This is, it's metallic, and I don't usually uh, use metallics in flip cups, but um, this is called Iridescent Blue Green. I always get this one mixed up because it it comes in green blue and this one is blue green. So it's a metallic turquoise is what it is. And then I have Liquitex um, Bright Aqua. Um, I usually use Amsterdam, but we'll see how this one works. And then I have Amsterdam um, Titanium White. And then we have um, two mixtures of um, Amsterdam Azo Orange mixed with a little bit of Amsterdam, um, and these are all standard series, Amsterdam Azo Yellow um, to lighten it up a little bit. And then the same with this one is Amsterdam uh, Pyroli Red, and it's also mixed with the Amsterdam uh, Azo Yellow to lighten this up a little bit. So basically I have an orangey red and a yellowy orange, and then I'm gonna have the white separate um, the blues from the uh, oranges and reds. So what I'm going for is a bright aqua marine type feel. Um, I'll show you a picture of one I did about four years ago, um, and I've never been able to um, duplicate it. And I'm going to try to duplicate it on a much smaller scale. So we'll see if it works. If it comes out all green and muddy, well, that's the risk you take. Um, my paints are thick enough, I don't think that they will, but um, I've had that problem in the past. So I'm gonna layer my cups. I have four little Dixie cups 
and how I'm putting them on the canvas is how I'm going to be flipping them. I'm going to be um, flipping and dragging. So, all right. Well, wish me luck, everybody. Um, okay, first uh, we want to add our silicone. So um, this is treadmill silicone. You can, I've used this, this one bottle has lasted me uh, over four years and I still have about half a bottle in there, but you can see that I, um, it's a mess. You can't even read it, but it's, um, treadmill, uh, pure silicone, hundred percent silicone. And I'm going to put, um, four drops in each color, except for the dark blue. Um, I'm kind of using the blue as my black if that makes sense and I'm hoping it will just sort of sink to the bottom um, and not bubble up in dark blue so um, let's count out the drops there's four five one oh that did not see that just spilled out so I'm holding my um, bottle too high um, I think I got four or five drops in there but I'm going to stir that up really good and I'll put it in the white too Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, a little silicone goes a very long way. And I like to stir it up um, so I don't get those huge, giant, long caterpillars, which is what I think happened in this uh, old painting here that I'm painting over big old globby uh, cells. Even though it was pretty, it just didn't work up on the wall. So a little stir. By the way, acrylic pouring, especially this method is messy. And uh, yeah, be prepared. Um, I put plastic down everywhere. Um, and then I collect the um, paint that drips off these canvases, I collect it on plastic underneath and I let it dry. And then I turn um, that paint into jewelry and I try to use up as much of the excess paint that comes off the canvas as possible. Okay, so now I'm gonna layer my cups and I actually, yeah, I guess I'll start with the, um, the dark blue. So your first color going in is gonna be the last color going out on the canvas. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of the blue on the each bottom. And if anything drips on this, it's okay, because we're gonna be painting over it. And I'm gonna to try to do two layers in each of these little cups here. Two layers of, each, of color. We'll see if I have enough room. So that's the um, phthalo blue. And then there is the, uh, what was that, iridescent blue green. And I'm just drizzling that on top of each one. And if it sinks into it, you know it's too thick. And these are not, these are staying right on the surface. Hoping you can see that. Yeah, you can kind of see in the cup. Okay. All right, now the aqua. And feel free to skip forward if you don't want me to see me layering cups here. Everybody has their own uh, technique that works for them and you'll come up with yours. This is not an exact science by any means. Okay, now we're gonna put the white in that will hopefully separate, um, well, it definitely will separate the colors. It will lighten up the bottom colors and prevent 
the oranges and the greens from making uh, brown, hopefully. see how this turns out like I said I'll include a picture of this elusive painting I've been trying to duplicate for four years now and haven't been able to and I sold that painting I only have a picture of it which is good but I like to make it again because they're so pretty they look like the ocean with little fish and plants and just all kinds of your they just make your imagination go cuckoo. All right, now the red, and we'll see if I have enough room to do this again. I think so. start over and then we'll flip them and if it turns out then I'll do another one because I have paint left over So what I did with this canvas is I took sandpaper to it because it was um, it was a finished painting and it had varnish on it. And so I roughened up the surface pretty good with some fine sandpaper and then cleaned that off with some uh, water and um, rubbing alcohol. And maybe that'll be another video on how to use canvases. I don't know. Okay, look at all this paint I'm getting all over here. I'm gonna wipe that all off in a second. Aqua. Now, if this doesn't turn out, I have some options. I can scrape all scrape it all off if it's just a nightmare um, and reuse that paint. Um, or, and this is something that I'm really excited about, is you can actually soak your canvases um, for a couple hours in really hot water and the painting will peel off the canvas and then you can reuse the canvas. Gesso it, let it dry fully and then gesso it, but um, it's a neat trick. Okay. There's the white in between. I think we're gonna make it, we're gonna have four full cups here. Yep. Okay, and the orange. If you're just starting out, um, this is a really good method. There's about a million other methods to acrylic pouring endless. I've been doing the bloom method for a long time and I just got a little tired of it. So I thought I'd go back to flipping. All right. It's already turning green. I can see the green. A little bit, but that's all right. Green is in the ocean, right? Right. Okay, let me just clean up my space a little bit. 
clean up this canvas. All right. Uh, let me wipe my hands off and then we're gonna flip these cups. So there's a technique to flipping too. Um, if I think about it, I'll screw it up. Um, if I just do it and flip it really fast, I hold one finger under the cup and flip, just like that. And then again, flip. If you don't do it really super fast like that, then it has a tendency to wool all over the place. Flip. And, oh, the inside of that cup is really cool. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. All right. So I did not spray the inside of my cups, which is some, something I, I forgot you should probably do when you're doing flip cups. And I actually don't have any uh, silicone spray. I used to use uh, like a WD-40, but that ended up uh, having like a really weird um, brownish color in it. And, and yeah, no good. Don't use WD-40 for that. But if you have um, a little silicone spray to spray in your cup, that way it'll come, um, it'll come down off the um, cups a little bit faster. Okay, so you let it sit there for a few minutes. And then we'll do the big flip and drag. I'm gonna take these uh, while they're way, uh, sitting there. Put these up here. Okay. Yeah, I haven't done a uh, video in a while, so it's good. Not for any particular reason. I've just been working super hard. Working super hard. Everybody works super hard. I've just been working hard and lots. All right. All right. I think I'm going to flip them. All right. I have to remember how to do this. It's been a while. And I have a feeling it's all going to sink in, in the middle a little bit, but um, I can certainly, I have lots of paint, as you saw, I can um, drizzle stuff on my corners and, all right, here we go, stop talking. And we're just going to flip, oh, is that pretty or what? Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay. And then we'll do this this way. That one came out a little bit oranger with lots of brown. See that? Greeny browny. Oh well. This one this way. Okay. And let's see if we can get that turquoise again. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, um, there's a lot of paint here. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. You can see some cells are already starting to come up. Um, I'm tempted to use the extra paint in these cups a little bit. In fact, I will uh, just on the corners because they're in these cups, right? And they mix in the cups and they turn brown. But this, this one actually came up okay. So we're gonna use it. Just real careful is all I'm trying to say about getting more brown than you want. Okay, so I won't use that one. Let's use this one. I do think I have enough paint. And the paint that is dripping onto the plastic down below is amazing. And it's gonna make for some really neat jewelry. I'm excited. All right. Okay, and I'm tempted to fill in here, but um, I can hear Julie Cutts screaming, don't do it. All right, let's pop that bubble. See, when you pop those little bubbles, 
uh, more cells come up too. And as soon as I hit this with a torch, it's going to explode um, in cells. And that's kind of what I want a little bit. And then stretch them out. Um, but I do, I have this little area here that I want to fill in. I can't help it. Just can't help it. All right. Ah, I knew it. All right, it'll be interesting. Let me take a torch to it. So this is a creme brulee torch. You can buy them on Amazon. Um, you have to fill them with butane. I have a fire extinguisher uh, right by my door um, because guess what? You're using open flame here and it's dangerous. So I keep it way up high off the paint because paint is flammable and I just do a quick breeze over. <sighs> And you see how many uh, cells just came just from that one little thing right there. Okay, so I'm not going to torch anymore. I'm going to let it sit. It's looking pretty cool. I hate this area here. That's that cup that I filled in there. And we got a big old glob of cells here. Love this corner. That's cool. All right. I'm going to go ahead and um, I have some huge cells and some more little tiny cells. But I'm just kind of feeling the weight of the paint. Um, so I'm going to rock it back and forth. I don't like this end. Uh, I'm going to pour off some uh, paint here, but just bear with me. So I walk it back really slowly. And I'm going to get rid of this line and this big old glob down here. And I just pour it right over the edge. Okay, it's going over, that worked. And then I'm gonna walk it back down this way and pour it over that side. Okay, pretty. Okay, and then this corner down here we go. I love the um, orangey red and the turquoise. It's so pretty. Okay, now I'll set it down for a second. And it's all about composition and just sort of figuring out what you don't like. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to bring this all down this way so I can cover this up. Okay, and one more edge. It's okay, it's gonna be cool. We'll see if it dries. That's also a problem when you're painting over canvas. Okay.
So I hate it the way it is, just so you know. Um, I really like this one little section here, and I wish the whole thing was like that. Uh -huh. So I'm going to try and stretch some of this down that way. But let's see if that works. Sometimes, you know, it's just seeing what you can do. That was, I'm pretty glad I did that. Wow. I don't know if you can see this, but yeah. All right, and we're gonna bring it back to the middle, just to keep the weight in the center. Okay, not as many cells as I wanted. Um, but I like this whole oceany section here. And I like it better than it was before the painting that I had. So those are all good. And so I'm running my finger along the edges to get all these drips. And if you flip your cups over onto the plastic, that's usually where I get the best jewelry making. I guess I'll have to do a video on jewelry making. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll see how this dries. Not at all like Julie Cuts. <laughs> I guess my paint was too thin. Oh, man. Oh, I know. I could get uh, more cells by torching one more time. Let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, a lot of experimenting going on today. Man, at least it's cooler out here. I don't know, what do you think? It looks like kind of a lava lake. Clean my hands up. Be right back. Okay, let's get the torch. And now this will, um, this will take a couple days to dry. So I'm not obviously gonna give you a dry result on this little video clip, but right. yeah, we're getting some more cells. Sweet. Okay, I love it. Very cool. I don't know, it just makes it like you're in the ocean. Yeah, I like it. And hopefully these cells don't get huge and ginormous uh, and take over the whole painting, and that can happen too. Yeah. Some people like silicone. Um, some people love it, some people hate it. Um, I like it a lot, but that's what that is. That's what the silicone is. It's oil coming up through the paint. And remember how I said I didn't want to put uh, silicone in the, uh, dark blue. Um, well, apparently it got in there from the other paints. So, but yeah, that's neat. I like that. I'll take you down for a close up. Take my gloves off. Alright, sorry for the glare. Okay, cool. If you look at that, 
multicolored cells. And there's the right hand corner, upper right, left, bottom corner. Uh, it looks like the ocean to me. And what I, what you can do is you can use that as a background and put stencils on top. Look, we can see those cells getting bigger right in this video. All right. Anyway, um, I'll show you a picture um, that I did with embellishments. And so you can see what I'm talking about. Hang on. All right, so this is what I was talking about. This is a an acrylic pour with resin and then stenciled um, sea life on top of the resin in two different layers. And then I used um, this gold outliner um, to outline the stencil and it came out really cool. So it's like got this 3D look. Anyway, that's um, I'll be doing something like that with the painting we just did. All right. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching, guys.